the show for you today. First, let's get to our man, Achilles Reign. And the NBA season preview continues. Last week, we did win totals. Today, we're going to do awards, conference, and division winners. So, you ready to get into it, Achilles? Yes, sir. I'm ready. All right. So, let's start off at the bottom. NBA blocks leader. This is a fun and interesting category and only degenerate gamblers possibly like myself. I don't know if I've quite drug you into the degenerate category yet, but uh, by this time next year, you probably will be talking to me in July about who's going to lead the league in blocks. Well, I would like to say that you have dragged me to that point, but I'm not quite there yet. Although I think you've definitely drug uh, the wife down that rabbit hole. So. <laughs> Maybe I'll get her on next year to talk about the blocks leader in the NBA. She already has her NBA bets and she's got preseason bets going on. She's really into it right now. Yeah, uh, I don't go into the preseason NBA territory. I, I very rarely, rarely go into the NBA territory. I sort of pick and choose my spots, but... Uh, all right, blocks leader. You ready to go? Yep. The top five in this are Whiteside at plus 250, Gobert plus 250, Lopez, Brooke Lopez, not Robin Brooke, at plus 400, and then Anthony Davis at plus 400, and Miles Turner at plus 700. I, I, it's either going to be Whiteside or Gobert, probably for sure. I don't see a ton of value there in the plus 250. I had a couple guys I highlighted that I thought would be halfway valuable there. But uh, where are you sitting with the uh, blocks leader? Yeah, I'm kind of on the same page as you. Uh, at 250, there's some value there. I just, you know, it's one of those stats that just could go either way, really, uh, especially like depending on injuries or, you know, even the slightest thing like uh, the type of opponents you're going to face against, uh, face up against. So I think that this is one of those that, you know, it's more if you really just kind of want to have a little extra skin in the game because, like you said, I, I personally think that White is probably going to take this one, but I could definitely see someone like Brooke Lopez, you know, like really come out and uh, and make a statement. But yeah, I like I like the favorite. I just don't see much value there. Yeah, uh, White Side who pretty much sacrifices all defense to. Uh, gather any block he can uh, is always a good favorite, especially if he's getting the minutes. Uh, Gobert uh, is just a overall highly skilled defender and gets a ton of blocks. Uh, Lopez as uh, the defensive system funnels into him to blocks. I'll be interested to see how much he actually plays this year as they sort of reorganizes that team, but they do funnel that defense into him. But I, I had a couple value guys uh, that uh, I don't know if they could – lead the league in blocks, but there might be some value number wise in them. The first one I had circled was uh Porzingis at uh twenty to one here. I thought he's always hovering around that top five in blocks. Um I think with uh Willie Cauley Stein in there he might be able to play a little bit more off the ball and uh be able to come help side and get a handful of blocks there. I'd say about 2.8 to 3.2 usually is hovering around the leader in blocks. So I sort of liked the value in Chris Stapp's Porzingis. And then I had two long shots, really long shots, that uh, one is circumstantial and one just actually I kind of like. Uh, Norland's Noel, uh, supposedly he's going to be the starting center for the New York Knicks. And uh, Norland's is a, a flawed player, but the one thing he can do is get blocks and steals. He's a little bit like Hassan Whiteside, and at plus 1,000, 100 to 1, uh, I really see a ton of value there. And then uh, the last one, uh, Jared Allen at plus 5,000. Currently speaking right now, that would be a terrible bet, but uh, as he's pretty much involved in every trade that Nets speak of, if he could find a landing spot somewhere where he's the starting center full-time, uh, there's – a pretty good value at the uh, money paid there, I thought. Yeah, and I think this is kind of uh, going to be the theme going forward for uh, for my point of view. Uh, there's a few situations here where I could see some trades happening, uh, and it affects the uh, the overall positioning for the awards that I I looked at when I saw the odds. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I'll give you my one bet that I would make 
uh, I gave you some ones I value, but the if I was going to put money on anything and have it be held for eight months, this is always <laughs> the tricky thing about this. Uh, all these things uh, you make bets on, but uh, essentially it's like a savings account that's holding your money for a very long period of time. It's an but, investment. Uh, yeah, sometimes you get a little tired of seeing that in the pending wagers for eight months, but uh, this New Orleans Noel value at plus 1,000. Uh, you put a small little bet in there, if he continues to play full-time center for the Knicks, uh, I think he could be hovering around that top three in blocks. So I, I really like the value in New Orleans Noel. Yeah, it's actually really good value, especially like you said, if he's going to be starting, he's definitely going to get more opportunities to get those blocks. So um, at plus 1,000, uh, it's a pretty nice bet. Yeah, and uh, it also might be a terrible bet if the Knicks figure out what everybody else has figured out and he's not worth uh, playing more than about 15 or 20 minutes a game. But that can be said for Hassan Whiteside and he just goes after blocks every chance he gets and somehow leads the league in blocks. So you never know. All right, we'll move on from blocks to steals. This is this is an interesting category. It's a hard one to sort of predict, uh, but uh, Ben Simmons at plus 240 is your favorite. Uh, Steph Curry at plus 425 is uh, second. Chris Dunn at plus 500. And then Andre Drummond uh, at plus 800. Kawhi Leonard at plus 10,000. Hard to call here. Uh, ben Simmons... Uh, was the league leader last year. Uh, we'll probably have the most opportunity. I, I'd be a little leery with Steph Curry uh, at plus 425, especially since I think he'll have to shoulder pretty much all the brunt of that offensive uh, uh, for the Warriors. Ed Dunn, plus 500. I'm, I don't know if you could take him because the way that Hawks team is right now, I don't know where his minutes are coming yet. Drummond's a solid bet at plus 800, but I, I was curious to get your take in the steals leader here. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the consensus favorite for the steals leader is always going to be, you know, one of the smaller players like their guards. Um, but, you know, this, for some reason, when I'm looking at the odds for this, and by the way, I think you said Kawhi at plus 10,000. I had to double check that because – yeah. If it was at plus ten thousand, oh, I'm, prob I'm probably plus ten thousand. Sorry, <laughs> at I'm plus probably... ten thousand. I'm already putting money on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially when you're talking about Kawhi. But uh, actually, Kawhi to me, I think he probably has the most value. Uh, you know, when you look at these uh, these predictions, I just feel like you know, defensively, we already know what he brings to the table. He's you know one of the best defensive players in the league. And uh, if you're giving me odds of a uh, of plus one thousand, you know, this is probably uh, one of those that I might kind of sneak a little bet into. And just like you said, just uh, watch as the season progresses and hope that he keeps playing the type of defense we're used to seeing from him. Yeah, I had three highlighted. They were really low down the list. Uh, Giante Murray at plus 3,500 for the Spurs. Real long, likes to gamble uh, and get steals. Uh, I think he might have a chance uh, to break into that top five. Uh, the other one, John Wall, who uh, in years past has been a top sort of steals guy. He loves to gamble and go after steals. Now, you're gambling that he still has the explosiveness and can get those steals. I think he will get minutes. Uh, he certainly will get minutes if uh, James Harden is traded away. And if he's healthy, uh, I, I don't see any reason where the value of plus 4,000 on John Wall wouldn't be pretty good value. And my last one, uh, Robert Covington. He, he's not a great steals guy, but I think he'll play a lot of minutes for the Portland Trailblazers, and minutes gives you opportunities. And uh, he definitely is the best uh, defender on that Trailblazers team. So at plus 5,000 for Covington, those were three that were really long shots that I thought might have uh, a little bit of value there. Yeah, I definitely see where you're coming from. I, I kind of like your picks. Uh, but for me, a safer bet that still provides pretty good value is Kawhi. Yeah, I, I like your Kawhi. Uh, I don't think I'm going to put any money on this one uh, where I, I liked uh, the thought of putting money on Noel and uh, sort of having a, a flyer on it. If I was going to take a flyer on anyone, I think it'd be John Wall just because he, he's been up there in years past. Uh, if he could be healthy, which is a large, large if, but uh, if he could be healthy, I think he definitely breaks into the top part of this category here. No, definitely. He's definitely uh, got the potential to really make a difference and an impact on that defensive side of the ball. But um, 
I also like the Valley, so I see where you're coming from. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll move to assist leaders. And I'm not going to lie. I had a real hard time with this one. I didn't like the value of the top guys, but the lower guys, I didn't see anyone who I thought could lead the league in assists. So uh, you have LeBron James as the favorite at plus 300, Trey Young at plus 350, Luka Doncic at plus 450, Russell Westbrook at plus 500, Ben Simmons at plus 1,000. So I'm curious if you had a value that you saw in here or anything, because I really didn't have much to go with here, other than I thought there was a chance that Luka might lead the league in assist. He was up there last year, but I'm curious where you're coming from. Well, when I was looking at this list, what really struck me is that I could definitely see anybody in that top 10 list, uh, you know, taking the, uh, the lead, uh, you know, as uh, the assist leaders. But when I look at the value they provide, I wasn't uh, completely sold on it. Um, obviously LeBron James is the consensus favorite. And, you know, I, I think that he's got the possibility to be up there this season, uh, you know, especially as he gets a little older, he tends to kind of dish the ball a little bit more and he definitely got a, a few more, uh, role players on that team during the off season. But I mean, if, if I had to take anything here, I, I, I kind of like Ben Simmons at plus 1000. I, I, I feel like out of those top guys that could lead the league, I feel like he probably provides the best uh, safety and value combined. But I mean, I'm not sold on any of them, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, that That's a great point. Uh, ben Simmons and Chris Paul were the two that I highlighted as having some value. Uh, I think it will probably be between LeBron and Luca, but the value there at plus 300 and plus 450, just that's, you'd have to risk at least a high amount of dollars to try to get any value back there. And it's just a little too random, especially with James, where I don't know how assured you are that he's going to play a ton of games or minutes wise. And that just is a little scary there, but uh, I loved your Simmons one. I highlighted him at uh, plus a thousand. The only thing that concerns me there is, you know, he'll have a handful of games where he doesn't really get a ton of assists and it, he'll go more into uh, drive and score mode. The one I highlighted was a uh, Chris Paul at plus 2,500. Um, he's playing with uh, a great shooter in Booker. He's playing with a, a nice uh, pick and diver in uh, DeAndre Ayton. I know he'll be in the mix. So at 2,500, it seemed like there was at least decent value, uh, depending on if you think Chris Paul can hold steady for at least one more year before his he starts to age out of the position and uh, has a drop off. Well, I mean, we saw last season he still was an impactful player, even though you know a lot of people consider him uh, on the older side of what you'd like your guard to be at, but. He, he still has it. He still has the IQ. You can't never lose that regardless of the uh, physical abilities. And I still think he's got some left in the tank. So what was it 2,500? Yeah. 2,500. Yeah. 2,500. I think that's a pretty good, you know, pretty solid bet. I, I don't think that, you know, you're risking too much in terms of safety and uh, you know, he definitely has a lot of upside. So. Yeah. The, the only thing that was sort of bad about uh, Chris is uh, his assist has dropped off sort of, each year of the last uh, handful of years. Now, some of that is situations. Uh, he was in Houston where uh, no one passes the ball at, at all. And uh, then he went to OKC where he had a shoulder, I thought, a little more of the scoring load. Plus, he played in that three-guard lineup uh, with Schroeder and uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander. So, you know, three ball handlers, maybe not uh, a lot of assists. Where this, he'll be the main ball handler, definitely. And then uh, – you have a lot of weapons where he can more distribute and I don't think he'll have to score quite as much. Yeah. That's actually a really good insight. I, I, I really agree with that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I once again on assist leaders betting wise, I highlighted Chris Paul, like maybe put a little something there just cause it was so large, but uh, it would definitely not be one I was very confident in. No, uh, but I definitely see the upside in it though. Yeah. All right. We'll go to rebounding leader. And uh, I found a couple of ones that had a little value here, especially since uh, Drummond was such a heavy favorite at minus 125. Into Dekupo, the second favorite at plus 350. Rudy Gobert at plus 450. Hassan Whiteside at plus 3,500. And uh, 
DeMontis Sabonis at plus 2,500. I was curious where you fell on the rebounding leader here. You know, when I looked at this list, I, I, there was a couple of guys that I liked. Uh, I think the discrepancy in in um, in payback when you look at the odds, like you said, Drummond's at minus one twenty five. Uh, the the drop off between those first like top ten guys is pretty big. Uh, so as I'm going down this list, I'm trying to think of which teams got you know improved more, which teams do I think uh, are going to be a lot better, a lot more cohesive. Because uh, all that plays into the uh, rebound, and you know, you got to be able to box people out, things like that. So I kind of like, I kind of went with Philly this season. I thought that Joel Embiid would probably be good value at that, at you know, where he sits at plus twenty five hundred. Um, I, I feel like he definitely has the potential to lead the league in uh, rebounds. He's uh, he's a guy who's gonna you know go up and go after the ball. He's pretty aggressive. Uh, my only concern with him is is can he make it through the entire season? But I definitely see him as a possible leader in the rebound section. Yeah, I I liked that one. Uh, that's a smart choice. I had three guys highlighted as I thought were pretty good value. The first one was uh, DeMontis Sabonis, who just eats rebounds. Uh, now, there's a little problem with Miles Turner down there, but uh, he's been in a lot of trade rumors, and he's actually a really poor rebounder. But he is a very large man who's around the basket, so he does steal some. But uh, DeMontis is just a beast on the boards. And uh, the plus 2,500 I thought was pretty good value. The other one I looked at was uh, Bam out of Bayou at plus 5,000, which uh, he's just uh, – he was in there in the mix uh, for rebounds until that uh, sort of last part of the year. So really good value. And then I, I know you're going to like this one. I had a real long shot and sort of a sleeper. Russell Westbrook at plus 10,000. <laughs> now, Russ is a rebounding machine. He's going to possibly the worst rebounding team in the NBA with nobody who can rebound. He's a double digit rebounder. So, you know, Andre Drummond's about 13 or 14 boards a game. Russ is about 10 or 11 of a game. If he can get three more rebounds on that poor rebounding Washington team, uh, that puts you in the mix. And at plus 10,000, uh, that seems like a decent long shot bet to throw $5 on and Russ goes nuts and starts stealing every rebound for a Washington Wizards team where nobody wants to rebound. You know, I, I just want to make sure you did say plus 10,000, right? Yes, and that's correct. It is plus 10,000. I'll tell you what, man, you know, for, for a guard, you know that he likes to go up, he, he likes to go after boards, man. He's, he's just that type of player. He's got that type of mentality. Um, at plus 10,000, I could definitely see myself dropping, you know, a few, a few bucks on this, uh, you know, especially if I, if I start talking to the wife about this. I'm sure she's going to jump on it. So I didn't, I didn't even look that far down the list, but – that's really yeah, good he's value really down there. Uh, Julius Randall, Derek Favors, Ben Simmons, Kevin Love, Stephen Adams, Tristan Thompson, all are ahead of a Mitchell Robinson. I was like, you know, how is that possible? I don't know. I'm like, Russ is a ridiculously good rebounder and better than pretty much all those guys. So uh, I don't know. It seemed like a five dollar bet to win five hundred. Uh, seems like pretty decent value there for a guy who I'm pretty sure is going to get double digit rebounds for a team that can't rebound at all. Yeah, I mean, if you have a few extra shekels, I think that uh, that type of value it's definitely worth uh, investing. We're going to call it investing, yeah, uh, because there's some upside there. Well, now the wife's going to take it, and you're going to be watching Washington Wizards games all season long. How exciting <laughs> is that going to be? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I was already kind of looking forward to it. but There you go. They're on the East better. Coast, too, so they'll be right in your window when you're awake. Oh, yeah. All right. We'll move on past rebounder. Did you have a good uh, pick uh, other than Embiid? Don't... Rebounder, I didn't mean to. Oh, no, no. Off. No, I mean, basically the way I'm going down my list, I'm just taking guys that I think provide good enough value and are safe picks. Uh, but, I, you know, as far as the inside goes, I, I just – I like hearing what you have to say, man. This is uh, – you just, you just gave me a good one now. I'm probably going to jump <laughs> on it as we speak. We're going to flip the odds. Russell Westbrook's going to be like at number four. <laughs> Why is somebody betting on Russell that all of a sudden five bets come in on Russell Westbrook to <laughs> lead the league in rebounding? All right, we'll go to a fun one. We'll go to the scoring champion. All right, scoring champion. James Harden at plus 130. I can't tell you how bad a value I think that is. 
Damian Lillard at plus 600, Luka Doncic at plus 600, Steph Curry at plus 900, Devin Booker at plus 1,000. Handful of good value guys I saw in here. Uh, a couple I really liked. I'm, I'm curious to get where you sit, where you're sitting on scoring leader here. Are you a James Harden guy at plus 130? I mean, he has been all the way, but uh, it doesn't seem like a year for that. No, I mean, uh, he definitely seems like the best scorer in the league right now, and he has been over the last few seasons. If not, you know, he's within the top three. Um, I just think that the value just isn't there for me. Um, it's a safe bet, but there's just very little value, so I don't know how I feel about uh, something like that. But there were a couple guys that I kind of like, not huge value, but the whole uh, safety and value uh, you know, combination is there for me. Um, one was uh, Damian Lillard at uh, plus 600. Um, he's obviously a scoring machine. We've seen him, you know, improve his range as, uh, as, he, as his career has progressed. Uh, he can hit it from just about anywhere. Uh, on his team, you know that he's always going to be, you know, the number one option. So he's got good potential, and I think he's a pretty safe bet uh, with some decent value, not great or anything, but pretty good value. And the other guy, uh, I thought that uh, uh, Steph Curry, um, with the fact that they don't have uh, – you know, Thompson this season, uh, he's going to have a rookie pretty much starting at center. I think that it's going to uh, put the load on him offensively. So I think that this another another player that has some decent value at plus 900. Uh, but I really didn't feel comfortable about any of the uh, the guys that were deep down. Yeah. Uh, well, guess what? We have the same guys highlighted here. I had two, three guys highlighted. Curry and uh, was one of them for sure. And uh, Damian Lillard was another one I thought was a uh, really decent value at six to one. Uh, the other guys I was looking at is uh, Antetokounmpo at plus 1200. He's been hovering around 30 points a game uh, for a couple years now. Uh, if they bump up his minutes, I don't know if they're going to do that. You know, they blow so many teams out, but uh, at 1200, I, I thought Antetokounmpo was pretty good. Uh, the other one I was looking at was Booker at plus a thousand he was uh, up to 26.6 last season. So uh, I think you probably have to be around that 29 to 32 mark this year. Um, so uh, about another two baskets or so. I, I think that could come, especially since they'll be in more games and uh, trying to make that playoff push. And the wild card I put in here, Kevin Durant at plus 2,000. Um, he scores with such ease. I, I think he could go to sleep and score about 20, 28 points a game. So at uh, plus 2,000, I, I thought there was a lot of value there in uh, Kevin Durant. Now, you don't know how healthy he is. You don't quite know what that situation will be with uh, Kyrie and Kevin Durant. Uh, I think Durant would for sure, you know, uh, default to Kyrie because Kyrie wants to shoot and Durant can sort of take 10 shots and score 24 points without blinking. And um, you don't know if they end up getting hardened and then you got a real interesting situation of who's shooting what. But uh, those were the guys I had highlighted. The other one I, I sort of looked at was uh, Bradley Beal. He was sort of sneaky in the top three last year in scoring. Now uh, with Russ there, but uh, it might uh, – default back to about 26 25 but uh i think that wizards team's going to score a lot of points but i did like your uh lillard and curry i highlighted curry as uh one i was going to bet on at plus 900 well see i like you i thought about bo for a second and then the fact that russell westbrook is there uh just completely made me jump away from that you know possible bet um and then i thought about kevin durant also you know he's obviously a scoring machine the guy's you know super proficient but what drew me away from dropping a bet in that would, was the fact that we still don't know what the situation is going to be with the possibility of James Harden joining that team. Um, now you go back to the days of the big three in Miami and about 80 to 90% of the offense was from those three guys. Could that be a similar situation here? Possibly, especially if that trade happens because you know, they're going to have to give up so much to get uh, Harden in. So I guess it could happen, but I just thought that the possibility to bring in another scorer would probably diminish his chances. Yeah. Uh, 
The thing on Beal that I liked, even with Russ, is uh, Durant won a scoring title with, you know, Russ as his co-partner, and he won an MVP. So I I think Beal will get his shots at least. Uh, now, uh, anyone outside of the Westbrook Beal uh, foray, I, I'd be a little more nervous about, but I think Beal will definitely at least get his shots for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I see where you come from. It makes, it makes sense. It's just, like I said, I'm playing on the side of – uh, cautious yet, uh, you know, thrill seeking at the same time. So, yeah. Uh, what did, did you want to put money on one of these guys? Were you looking at Lillard or were you looking at Curry? I, I didn't, or both really, because uh, there are values where you could offset it if one of them wins and one of them loses. Yeah. I mean, I, I could definitely see a scenario where I definitely get action on both of those guys. Like you said, uh, the, the value is good enough to where you could offset it. Um, but if I had to pick just one guy, I'd probably lean more towards Lillard just because he's an offensive, uh, you know, uh, dynamite. He just can go off at any, any time, uh, with Curry. I, like I said, I do think that offensively the, uh, the weight's going to be more on his shoulder this season, but you know, I, I don't know. Lillard's just very dynamic. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to throw, uh, Doncic at you, uh, any chance there? He's getting the same value as Lillard. I mean, he was up around 28-8 uh, last season. Uh, do you think that could – I think it e- easily could climb to 30 with a little more efficiency on the three. Um, what do you think of the Doncic value overall? I mean, I think there's decent value there. You know, his numbers have definitely been uh, trending upwards. As a, But I don't know. I'd like to see him get closer to like the 29, uh, you know, before I, I feel confident about him doing it, see, you know, season after season. Yeah. Uh, I'll touch on Harden at 130. Um, he, you know, he's been so far ahead in the scoring uh, race for the last couple of years. Uh, I just, I don't see any value, but uh, do you think he'll, even with what it is, it'll lead to uh, another scoring title for him or? Well, see, there's there's very little value to begin with because he's been so efficient and so you know such a high score throughout you know most of his uh, career as a starter that the possibility of him going to a big three situation just shies me that that much more from uh, taking it. There's very little value to begin with, and then the possibility of having you know some other big name players on the team, uh, which we still don't even know how that dynamic would work, but those type of things just kind of sway me away from taking Harden. Yeah. The only thing that would make me a little nervous about uh, betting on these other guys is there are now, you know, rumors about Harden going to, you know, some other teams, uh, sort of uh, middle tier contenders uh, who would, he would then be traded to and essentially the ball would be in his hands 90% of the time. And then you're back to what he was in the Rockets form of, you know, he has the ball the whole time and he's going to score. Uh, he might need to lose a little weight. I think he's been on the same diet you and me have been on the last couple of months. So, <laughs> you know, I'm over here uh, tapping on the belly, but uh, it's just, it's the type of, it's the time of season, man. You know, you can't count these uh, Christmas calories, holiday cal- calories don't count. So uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how we look compared to Harden when it comes to summertime. Well, uh, we don't, we don't have to go out and play an NBA game in in another day, so I think we're okay. Yeah, I he I mean, listen, he's probably pretty disgruntled now, and it's probably one of the reasons why he's trying to make a statement. I think that uh, he'll be ready to go once it's time. Remove to yourself from these strip club chicken wings, please. <laughs> I'll take the chicken wings. You can keep you can keep the strip club. All right, NBA Coach of the Year. Interesting choices here. I saw a couple where I saw a little value, but I'm curious of your take. Uh, Steve Nash, the overall favorite at plus 900. He was not one I saw value in. Monty Williams at plus 900 for Phoenix. Rick Carlisle at plus 1,000 for Dallas. Eric Spolster at plus 1,400. Brad Stevens at plus 1,400. I did not really like any of those top five, but I saw some decent ones down here. Where are you? You know, again, uh, I reiterate, I'm going on the side of cautious with some, you know, some risk. Uh, so for me, 
I, I really like the Eric Spolstra. Uh, I think that at 1400, it's not, you know, it's not horrible, but it's also not great. But you saw what they did last season and how they played, especially on that last run. You know, they got a lot of those same guys back and they added a little bit of depth. I think that they're one of those teams that could be sneaky good this season. And, uh, you know, because a lot of people are definitely just kind of making that bubble season, you know, off to just a little tournament. I, I think that he's got the potential to make a, you know, a run. And if he does, I could definitely see him uh, being top candidate for coach of the year. Yeah. All right. The first one I, I saw that immediately stuck out to me in value was Stan Van Gundy at plus 1600. Uh, if this New Orleans team turns out to be good, uh, everybody is already salivating over them for some reason or another. I don't know. But uh, if Stan could get this team to defend and put them in the, uh, let's say, middle of the pack of the Western Conference, that will be very difficult. But uh, they have, you know, talent, and that's a pretty muddled, deep uh, thing. So it might be two wins separate uh, five from you know, like the 12th best team in the Western Conference. So at plus 1,600, I thought Stan was pretty good value. Uh, on those same lines, uh, James Borrego of the Charlotte Hornets at plus 3,000. If he can get that team in the playoffs, especially if he can get them in the mid-tier, I, I think everybody would jump for joy, especially if he can get ball to play a good basketball. Hayward, you know, has a revival. I, I just... That could be interesting. And then the one I probably will bet on, uh, I thought there was pretty good value, um, Tyron Liu at plus 1,400. He's really liked. If he can somehow manage to uh, get this Clippers team to all sing Kumbaya and play patty cake together, uh, I think if they win and uh, are at least a top two team in the West, I think Tyron Liu will get a lot of love. Now, uh, it made me mildly concerned that Kawhi already said he probably wasn't picking up his option after this year. <laughs> so clearly there is still some issues going on, but uh, Tyron Liu at plus 1400, I thought there was pretty good value in. I mean, I could, you know, I guess you could, I could see where you're coming from with the Tyro Liu pick, but <clears throat> as a, as an LA native, you know, born and raised in the good old city of angels, the Clippers are known to have, a curse. Ooh. So I, I couldn't bring myself to, to pick him. I don't think that he's uh, the answer. I think that the Clippers are still cursed. And um, I, I, but I see, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I, I don't think the Clippers will be good. I think it's more likely they end up in a fist fight all year long. So, uh, but I, I just thought there was value there and they certainly have the talent to be a top team in the West. And if he can get them right, he can get them right. So uh, I wanted to talk over a couple who we didn't mention. Steve Nash, the overall favorite here with the Nets at plus 900. I mean, for a favorite, that's pretty decent value. Um, we all love Steve Nash, including the media. So that will be there. He's in a New York network. So that will be there, that off hype. Is there a chance that uh, Steve Nash takes this pretty easy if he, what do we say, uh, wins 46 games and the Nets finish third in the East? Now, I don't want to, you know, uh, trash talk the guy or anything like that. He's obviously, you know, a future Hall of Famer. But we're talking about Steve Nash to a Laker fan. You have to remember the history between the Lakers and Steve Nash. So is he loved by everybody? Yeah. Is he liked by everybody? Eh, not so much, uh, but he def as a favorite, he definitely does uh, give some value. Um, I just think there's too many question marks uh, when it comes to Brooklyn to really lock him down as a favorite. But you know, as the favorite, he does he does uh, give some value. Yeah, uh, the other one I wanted to touch on the co-favorite Monty Williams with Phoenix. This seems like a terrible value here. He doesn't have a lot of name recognition. He is liked. I will give him that. But uh, I don't think this Phoenix team has a chance to get into the top five of the West. And I just don't see them giving it to a, a number seven or eight seed that Phoenix probably would be. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I was a little confused as to why he was in that position also. Yeah. All right. We'll move on to NBA sixth man of the year. Interesting one. I had a couple fun ones. 
Uh, Jordan Clarkson is the favorite at plus 700. Didillo Gallinari coming off the bench for the Hawks at plus 800. Dragic at plus 1,000. Lou Williams at 1,000. Spencer Didwitty at 1,100. Where are we going here with six man? What did you like? I don't know. I, you know, I had a really tough time uh, when I was going down this list. I just, I don't know. I, I really wanted you to kind of sway me in a certain direction because I was really torn. Uh, I didn't see a lot of safety and a lot of value. I think that a lot of, uh, there, there's a reason why these guys are on this list. Um, some of them have a lot of upside. Some of the guys had a per, you know down year. So I don't know. I kind of want to get a feel for what you think. Well, Clarkson, I, I knock off because the analytic nerds uh, hate him. Uh, I don't hate him. I, he comes in, he does his job. His job is to come in and score. But uh, I think there's no chance because uh, every analytic weirdo I've ever heard can't stand him because, you know, he's a chucker who doesn't pass the ball but uh, and scores inefficiently. But uh, if you're on the Jazz, you need as many scores as you can. So I think he does his job. Gallo, I didn't love at plus 800, plus I'm not 100% sold how long him coming off the bench is going to last, especially if they get off to a bad start. They're going to want to insert him. Uh, and I thought Lou, uh, just too old. He's, you know, he does what he does, but he's already won the award enough, and I don't think they get it. Dragish, uh, I don't think would uh, is going to play enough. I figure they'll try to save him with the playoffs. The ones I had highlighted, Schroeder. I don't, yeah, Schroeder was one <laughs> at plus 1,400. The only thing I, that would concern me uh, with the Schroeder bet would be, I bet he starts a lot of games. He might be the full-time starter, uh, you know, next to a couple guys uh, like Caldwell Pope and them. So if he's starting, he won't be the sixth man. Uh, if he's coming off the bench, then, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of value there because I, I think he'll score a lot of points for this Lakers team. Uh, the one that is my favorite is uh, Davis Bertans at plus 2,000. Really like this guy. This is uh, what you – he sort of built his way into this sixth man. Comes in off the bench, chucks a bunch of threes, drains a bunch of threes. So he's got the flashy sort of points, you know, quick – flashy points comes in scores a lot of points if this wizards team uh overachieves and ends up uh in the middle of the pack in the eastern conference with uh berton scoring around uh 16 17 points which i don't think is uh that far a reach uh for the way he shoots and uh scores uh that 2000 value i really really like and the other one i had uh listed was a uh, real real Real, real long shot at uh, Shake Milton at plus 5,000. He's going to be the six or six man. So uh, if you are a believer in Shake Milton, he does have the ability to shoot and score. Uh, Doc uh, knows how to sort of use those guys uh, like Lou Williams, like Montrez Hel Harrell. And, uh, you know, um, I think he has a chance. Um, but he also could be a terrible player and out of the league uh, <laughs> before the end of the year. But uh, I, I, I like Shake Milton. I liked him at SMU. I think he has some value in this uh, list at plus 5,000. I think he could definitely be in there. I just don't know if he's uh, not enough of a name to really throw his hat in the ring. It might be two or three years before, you know, we see Shake Milton in the top part of this. Let me ask you a question really quick. Uh, for some reason, when we started doing the uh, the intro to this one, I thought we were doing most improved player. But, but anyways, um, that's coming next. <laughs> what do, what do you think about Rondo? As a six man, that's interesting. Because I mean, he's he, he's definitely shown some improvement offensively. Now he's not known as an offensive type of player. Uh, you know, he's mostly out there for his defense, but and his passing ability, but. He, he definitely showed some improvement in his, uh, his offensive game last season. I thought um, he was really confident in a lot of the shots he was taking, even though he missed a few here and there. I thought that uh, he showed a lot of confidence when it came to shooting the ball. I like that. It's pretty far value. I think it could be the one worry I'd have is you. I mean, we all know how Rondo is. He will play probably half the games really hard. And half the games he will be on cruise control, which I think might hurt his numbers a little bit. But 
I mean, if you could get a full sort of year out of them and you could get, let's say, a 10, 8, and 5 with a steal or two mixed in there, and the Hawks, uh, this is probably the key, the Hawks win. Uh, I think the Hawks would probably have to be a, a about a, 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 probably I'd say a four seed uh, to, you know, him to get any value. If they're sitting there struggling for a seven or eight seed, I just think uh, nobody pays attention on the East. But if he could, if the Hawks could get into that, uh, like, top uh, four, five, six spot, and he throws up, a, you know, like a, a 10, 8, and 5, and his uh, veteran leadership, uh, I think there's pretty decent value there. Yeah, I, I definitely see where you're coming from now. I just, like I said, I wasn't too sure about any of these guys. I, I kind of wanted to get a feel for it. But would you say it actually makes a lot of sense to me? But uh, at 6,600, there's there's value there. But uh, uh, the other one I wanted to – Carmelo Anthony's at plus 5,000. Now, um, he literally plays zero defense now, but he will be coming off the bench. He can score. If he could get to 18 points a game, uh, everyone loves him, and they want the Carmelo resurgence. So uh, plus 5,000, decent value there. Yeah, he definitely showed some uh, some some signs of life last season, and uh, was really an impactful player when he was in, you know, on the court. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to clearly your favorite award on the year, most improved player. <laughs> this is the one that I'm really not sure about. How many of these guys did you know after the top uh, ten to fifty? I I'd honestly, after that, it becomes a drop off, and this is one of the reasons why I was so confused. I'm like. <laughs> How can I pick a long shot when I'm not even sure where this guy's coming from? <laughs> you you weren't big on the Dort. <laughs> no, you know, uh, there's uh, there's a few guys that I thought you know had the possibility, but again, you know, this is just one of those where I I kind of uh, sit back and uh, and let the expert really kind of school me here. Well, I'm not going to lie. Um... I struggled on this one too, because really you have, (laughs) there's never been a real true criteria for what the most improved player is. It's just sort of random. Like uh, the favorite here, Jamal Murray at plus 1200. He's already a superstar in this league and an all-star. Why would, what would he, would he have to score 30 points a game to be the most improved player? Yeah, you know, when I when I looked at the list, or the, the first time I looked at it, I saw Jamal Murray up there. And then when I looked at it again, they have Christian Wood up now as as at plus 800. Yeah, uh, speaking of Christian Wood, we might be getting to him. But uh, Murray is the favorite at plus 1,200. Then you go, this is where it's weird. Then you go to Colby White at plus 1,400. You literally have a superstar in this league and a guy who scored uh, about eight to 10 points a game off the bench for the Bulls as your second favorite. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. at plus 1,600, Tyler Hero at plus 1,800, and Shea Gillis-Alexander at 1,400. Where did we go? What do you like in your category? Most improved player. I'll be honest with you. When I look at this list, I, I, I really don't know where to go. So this is one of those situations where – I'm going to put my shekels back in my pocket and uh, just kind of hope for a good season for all these guys. Maybe I get to know them a little bit better. All right. I'm going to give you uh, four guys I looked at, but uh, I really have no idea. You mentioned one, Christian Wood. I'm assuming he probably puts up a decent 18 and eight or so, maybe better, maybe a little worse for the Rockets. Um, I don't know how many people know about him. So when he does put up those good numbers, I think people will be like, oh, he's really improved. I don't know how much he has improved because anybody who watched him play last year, <laughs> that's pretty much what he did the whole last half of the season. So I, there is value there at plus 800. The next one that probably was the one I might bet on was Michael Porter Jr. at plus 1400. He will have the most presence I assume he will make a pretty big leap this year. He will be on a team in the Denver Nuggets, which everybody will be following and know. And uh, he will be probably the most named guy. So at 1,400, I thought there was value there. But um, the other two I looked at was DeAndre Ayton at plus 1,600, 
much like the Michael Porter Jr. Uh, Value-wise, Aiton will be in the spotlight if the Suns are good. Um, he did throw up great numbers last year. I know nobody paid attention because Phoenix was awful. So I don't really know, you know, if he improves by two points, but they win more games. I don't know if that makes him most improved or not, but I guess, you know, maybe. And the last one I put in there was a pretty big long shot, but uh, Markel Fultz at plus 5,000. Um, that just seems like a good story. Uh, he's fighting for that starting point guard spot. Uh, there's not a lot of depth behind him at point guard. If he plays a lot of minutes, can go 16 and six, the magic make the playoffs. Uh, maybe the story wise will get into the media and we'll get most improved for, uh, Markel Fultz. Yeah. I, I, I like your, I like your, your view on it. I think that, um, he definitely opened my eyes a little bit more to possibilities, but I still don't feel too good about any of these guys. Yeah. The only thing I highlighted, I put a small bet on Michael Porter Jr. just because I think he'll be in the spotlight. And of those I listed, he probably will have the best numbers, discounting Jamal Murray, which I know will have the best numbers because he's already a star player. But I guess if he throws up a Harden and goes for like 35 a game, Maybe we name him most improved, but at that point, I, I think he'd more be in the MVP conversation. <laughs> I think he'd take either one at this point, but all you know, right, nice little extra paycheck. Yeah. All right. We'll move to a little bit of a more interesting one. NBA Defensive Player of the Year. Gobert, your favorite at plus 300. Anthony Davis, co-favorite at plus 300. Ante Tacumpo at plus 450. Bam Adebayo at plus 900. Joel Embiid at plus 1,100. Defensive player of the year. What are you looking at? I'll tell you what I'm looking at. I'm looking at, like I said, with the uh, rebound section, teams that have improved uh, enough to work more cohesively as a unit. Uh, because, again, just like rebounding, defense is a team thing. Um, a lot of it depends on, you know, rotating and uh, and picking guys up and things like that. So I, again, went with Philly, and I think that Joel Embiid provides really good uh, value at where he sits. Uh, we already know what we're getting from him and the type of player he can be. Again, the only concern there is uh, the health. Uh, can he stay healthy for the entire season? And if he can, I think that he's got a really good shot at being the defensive player of the year. Yeah, Uh I liked uh, Embiid, and I had him sandwiched, though. I had Embiid and Simmons both on my list, and that also might be the problem, uh, where they split the vote uh, because, you know, Simmons is a great, versatile defender. Embiid is one of the best rim protectors in the league, and some people might prefer Simmons' style of defense. Some people might prefer Joel M Embiid's defense. I think there are values in both at plus 1,100 and plus 1,800. But what would scare me is they split and, you know, you don't end up with either. I had uh, Bam highlighted at plus 900. I thought there was pretty good value there. He made a name for himself uh, this year. Uh, and he made a lasting image with that block so people know his name. And uh, that defense sort of revolves uh, around him being that uh, just a uh, beast in the paint. And I think Bam's pretty good value. I had one long shot I thought about, and uh, that was Marcus Smart at plus 2,500. With Haywood out of there, uh, it's smart to start. Oh, that's fun to oh, say. I like smart that. <laughs> to start. So uh, he'll be aggressive. He'll be getting floor burns. He'll be out there guarding the best guy. Um, but I don't know if he's overall uh, – he's a aggressive defender and a good defender, but uh, I don't know if he is overall like uh, a, an elite defender where you put somebody where they just shut somebody down. And that's what a, a small guard like that has to be who's just a lockdown guy like a Bruce Bowen or, or Kawhi Leonard where, I mean, you put them on them, they aren't scoring. Uh, smart can be uh, had. Yeah, I like your take on smart. Um, my concern there is, like you said, he's a really aggressive defensive player, uh, and we've seen it uh, cost him a few times. And uh, there's always the potential for that to happen again this season. So it seems like sometimes when things don't go his way defensively, he tends to get uh, you know a little overly aggressive and kind of reaching in uh, when he shouldn't be, things like that. So 
I, I see where you're coming from, but I definitely feel a lot safer with, you know, someone like Joel Embiid. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to touch on the top guys uh, briefly on Rudy. Uh, you know, he'll be in the mix there. Top three, uh, the plus 300, I guess that's decent value. If you know that guy's going to be there, especially once, you know, everybody sees his metrics of defense, but uh, hard to, judge on plus 300 uh the uh, one i wanted to really touch on was anthony davis it's hard to quantify his value because i don't think everybody sees it defensively but uh i think he's legitimately the best defensive player in this league you know not an award but uh if you were saying i want to build a defense i think you'd start with anthony davis uh i think that's maybe starting to come around where people will vote for it um the plus 300 solid value for such an elite guy, but uh, he hasn't been able to corner that award yet, but uh, maybe this is the year where uh, votes start coming to him. Now that he has his championship, everybody saw his value and uh, he'll be on the big stage with the Lakers again. Yeah. For me with Anthony Davis, um, I think one of the reasons why he doesn't really get noticed a lot for his defense is the fact that he's so far in his young career has been pretty much relied on to be, you know, the offensive guy. Um, and I don't think that's going to change a lot this season. I still think that he's going to be heavily dependent on to put up points. And because of the, uh, the offensive prowess that he has, um, sometimes his defensive, uh, you know, play really gets overlooked. Uh, but like you said, now with the championship under his belt, uh, maybe it brings a little more attention to his defensive play. And uh, like you said, at plus 300, you know, the top three guys, three, uh, first two guys are at 300. Then you got uh, Giannis at plus 450. Those are pretty much, you know, safe bets that, you know, these guys are going to be, you know, in talks of defensive player of the year. Um, if you want a little more value, then you take a little more risk. But those are definitely safer bets. Yeah. Uh, I can't touch the Giannis this year because he won it last year and everybody will be down on him because they didn't make it to the finals. So I just stay away. The narratives pour on that one. I mean, uh, these awards are basically narrative based more than actual, you know, uh, true based of who it's, who has the best story, who has the best narrative going into it and who people want to vote for at the end of the year. So uh, I just don't think uh, Giannis will be in that uh, mix. I mean, he'll be in the mix because he's a ridiculously good defender, but uh, I don't think they'd be willing to give it to him this year. We'll get to that too. When uh, we get to MVP. Yeah, and I mean, just based off that logic, you know, definitely makes sense that Anthony Davis would get a little more attention this season, uh, especially after carrying the Lakers, uh, even though he does have LeBron there. But the big story was him carrying the Lakers to that championship. Yeah. All right. We'll go to the fun one. Rookie of the year. Interesting class. Um, I don't think any of them truly stand out as someone you can pencil right in there. Uh, I'm curious where you're uh, living in this. Where do what do you like? Who do you like? Uh, you know, there's two guys that I kind of like, uh, and I'm going to start off with the guy that I feel a little less comfortable taking, but probably has a little more upside. Uh, and that's Anthony Edwards. Um, I just think that offensively, he's going to be able to, you know, showcase uh, NBA type ready talent. Um, and I think those type of things get noticed a lot more than uh, who my favorite guy actually is. Um, James Wiseman. Uh, I, I, Liked him pretty much during the whole pre-drafting. I liked him in the draft. I think that the Warriors did uh, a really magnificent job in snatching him up when they did. Um, he's going to help them out. I think that he's probably – I feel safer with him for a couple reasons. One, I thought he was most NBA ready when it came to the draft. And two, he's going to contribute early and probably often, uh, especially with the uh, the loss of Clay Thompson there. Uh, that he might be relied on a little bit more offensively. And I think defensively that he can make enough of a statement to be a rim protector. You know, he's not a uh, elite defender by any, by any means, but uh, he definitely has the potential to grow into one. So to me, I, I feel a lot safer taking Wiseman as my favorite for rookie of the year. Interesting. Uh, I looked at the Edwards. I glanced at, it. I think uh, people are sort of undervaluing. Uh, I definitely think he'll be able to, at least have games where he puts up really spectacular numbers. Uh, I just, I don't have a great feel on how this is going to play out. A little bit of it scares me into uh, thinking it's going to be a year where like a, a Malcolm Brogdon 
uh, wins it. Uh, that's not to say that's bad. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon played on a winner and was part of a winner. He just didn't put up those, you know, stylish numbers like a John Morant last year. And when I look at this list, I don't see a lot of guys who will put up, uh, you know, really eye-popping numbers. I, I see guys who will have eye-popping games, and then we'll get three games where they basically do nothing, and they're two for 11 with uh, three turnovers. So I I highlighted a couple that I was looking at. Uh, one, Denny Avgia of Washington. I think he's the most stable rookie. Now, his numbers might be eight, five, and two, uh, but I think he will affect winning. And going by that, uh, if he's on a winning team like the Wizards, if they win and he's a part of it and he's a big player, I think he might get noticed a little bit. But the the one I put as someone who could gather numbers, if Markel Fultz doesn't turn out to be good, Cole Anthony at plus 4,000 is going to eat up all those Orlando Magic minutes. And he will shoot a lot, and he will get to the free throw line. And it might not be efficient, but he will score points, uh, sort of like he did in college. It wasn't efficient. He got fouls, and uh, he scored points. And at the end of the year, if you're looking at numbers, he might be the one who has the highest points per game, and that's just might be where you vote. And then the guy I highlighted, uh, the problem is team-wise, uh, Tyrese Halliburton, I thought really had good value at plus 1600. I think he actually might be the best rookie who plays this year, but it's a weird team who might be really bad, especially coming out of the West in the Kings. And, uh, we'll have to see how that fit goes with, uh, De'Aaron Fox and, uh, Tyrese and, uh, Buddy Heald. But, uh, I just thought there was decent value from wh what I've seen Tyrese, uh, play in college he was able to play off those guards and i thought there was pretty decent value at plus 1600 yeah i i like where you're coming from i think that's a uh, pretty good value um like i said the reason i'm leaning more towards a player like wiseman is uh, i think he's a safer bet and still provides decent enough value to make it interesting um i think that the wizards i'm sorry the wizards the warriors are going to be a uh, pretty good team this uh this season uh, i think that a lot of people are selling stock right now because you know, of the uh, Clay Thompson injury. And I think that even though it definitely impacts that team, I still think that they've got enough weapons to make an impact in the West. And I know that the West is tough, but I think that they have enough weapons to make an impact. And uh, if that's the case, uh, my only concern then would be how much Wiseman contributes offensively, because I think defensively is going to be where he's definitely going to stand out. Yeah. Um, I like the Wiseman thing. I'm scared because of the COVID thing. Uh, he still hasn't really played or practiced a bunch, I think he'll get off to a slow start. But uh, that being said, like I, I said earlier, if none of these rookies stand out, and uh, then Wiseman, once he gets into shape uh, and is capable of playing a, a lot of minutes, if he stands out, I, I definitely think he could take it because he'll be on a, a big flashy team in the Golden State Warriors, and he's a big flashy guy who can do big flashy athletic things for a large man. So uh, – I definitely uh, liked the value of Wiseman. Uh, the thing that scared me off was uh, this COVID, you know, thing early in the season. I'm scared he might not play a whole lot the first, like, month or so. Yeah, I mean, I, I get where you're coming from, uh, and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, this COVID era has been really strange. We've seen it with other sports and other leagues. Uh, it can have a pretty drastic effect, or it can be literally nothing. So it's really hard to tell. Um, so I get where you're coming from, but like I said, I, I just think that coming into the, uh, the the draft, I thought that he was the most NBA ready so that even with the setback, I think that he's probably the closest or the most able to at least, uh, you know, get closer to 100% by, by a season start. Yeah. All right. You ready for the big one? Yep. MVP. I'm curious. Who do you have? MVP. Uh, you're probably not going to like this. Um, I saw pretty, really, pretty decent value. Uh, and uh, again, this goes to the trend that I've been following pretty much all day long is the notoriety that they're going to get. And I, I, I kind of like the Steph Curry one at uh, plus 1100. Again, uh, he's going to be uh, leaned on more offensively. So I think his numbers are going to go up. 
we already know that he's a really uh, efficient defensive player. He doesn't have to do a lot to, to be, you know, to make an impact defensively. And um, he's going to have guys that are going to open things up for him. He, you know, he doesn't have Thompson. We've stated that a few times already today, but you know, he still has green and he, you know, now with the rookie there, I think that he's going to make enough of an impact. And I think the team's going to be good enough to where he's going to be in talks. Uh, Cause like you said, a lot of this has to do with, you know, how not just the media, but how your peers portray you. And I think the Steph Curry is probably one of the most liked players in the league. Yeah. Uh, that's a pretty decent choice. Uh, Luka Doncic is a favorite at plus 400. Anthony Kumpo at plus 500. LeBron James at plus 800. Anthony Davis at plus 900. And Steph Curry came in fifth in that one in plus 1100. Uh, I think, I think the MVP. Yeah. I think I, sorry, I just. I think I know who you're going to go with. Well, one. Uh, I think Luca's probably the narrative fits. Uh, I think that team will probably be a top four team in the West. He was already putting up uh, ridiculous numbers, and it's uh, you know, it's sort of his time. I I easily mark up into Decumpo. They aren't going to give him three MVP awards in the in a row. LeBron James is you know not getting another MVP award that you know, has passed. And uh, I don't even know if he's going to play. Anthony Davis is a little interesting, but I don't think anybody would get an MVP award uh, on the Lakers if it wasn't James. So I knock him off. So Luca's really hard to pass up here. I had a, a couple other guys long shot wise. Steph Curry was one of them. I thought there was value there, especially if he can, uh, you know, take that team uh, into the playoffs and score. Uh, the one I highlighted was your guy who you think might lead the league in scoring, Damian Lillard, at plus 2,000. Thought there was really good value there. If that Portland team grabs like a two seed, he goes for 29 points a game. And uh, I, I just think there is really good narrative there. Uh, the other one I was looking at was your friend, Kevin Durant, at I plus <laughs> 1,200. If the Nets are good, he will be good. And I think uh, – that New York market will uh, just kiss his boots. And I think there's a good value there. Uh, two long shots. Well, I don't know if it's a long shot. Jokic at 2,200, who's been in the top five of MVP voting two years in a row now. But uh, that's pretty good value for a guy who's been in the top five of uh, MVP voting. I think if uh, they can work their way into the one seed and he throws up, you know, another 20, 10, and eight, uh, there's a there's decent value there. The problem is, uh, you know, uh, like I said earlier, with like the um, defensive player of the year and Bede and Simmons splitting votes, uh, there might be split votes there with him and Murray. And the last one, the really long shot I was looking at, uh, and this team's growing on me, uh, the Utah Jazz, Donovan Mitchell at plus 6,600. If that team can make the leap, uh, they're healthier, they're deeper this year, if they grow themselves into a top one or two seeds in the West, which uh, before everything went bad and Rudy Gobert was blowing on microphones, that Jazz team was sitting right there. Uh, I think he could at least put his name in the hat. I don't think the narrative is quite there yet for him to be there, but uh, at least I think if that Jazz team turns out to be really good, I really uh, think Donovan would be a really good value at 6,600. Yeah, you know, uh, for some reason, I kind of had a feeling that you were going to lean towards the big, big long shot at plus 10,000, Russell Westbrook. <laughs> no, everybody hates Russ now, so I can't go there. But he's been close in seasons past. Yes. I mean, he's been in talks. Uh, I did look at the uh, Dwight Howard value of plus 100,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dwight Howard. Hey, well, hold on. Let me rephrase that. NBA champion Dwight Howard. Joel Embiid goes down and blows out his knee, and we get the Dwight Howard resurgence. Oh, uh, see, I, I know, I know you love Dwight Howard. I know this for a personal reason. Uh, you're always uh, talking him up and trying to, you know, sell him to any possible team. I, I, I know your love for Dwight Howard. Uh, if that sorry. man goes on an MVP run, I'm probably done watching the NBA for the rest of my life. NBA champion Dwight Howard. Oh, but uh, the one I really highlighted and the one I think I might put some money on is Damian Lillard at plus 2,000. I really like that value there. 
Uh, what'd you make a uh, Luca at plus 400? I, I mean, it's definitely the consensus favorite, uh, obviously, but I don't know. I, I feel like there are other guys that are a little more marketable when it comes to MVP. Um, I don't see Giannis, like you said, winning it again. I, I, I don't see that happening. I don't think they could let that happen. Anthony Davis, just like you said, I don't see him getting it over LeBron James. Um, I, I like the Steph Curry. I really like your Damian Lillard one. Um, Kevin Durant, the only reason why I wouldn't pick him is, again, the possibility of uh, another player coming into that team. Yeah. Um, also, that, we don't know that's how already, he is. Yeah, and he's already on that. You know, the player that would be coming in is also on this list. So um, when was the last time that you had two guys that were really in contention for MVP? It's probably been a while. So I think that's the reason why he, he wouldn't be one of my picks. But I really like your uh, little – what about uh, Kawhi? What do you think about Kawhi? You know, I stared at him. And uh, I looked at it, and I was like, if this Clippers team is uh, good. Uh, the problem is I think he's going to do his thing where, you know, he doesn't, you know, he does his rest on back-to-backs, and he's, you know, playing half the season. So I think everybody hates that now. So I don't think Kawhi will get it. All right. Uh, you want to take a break or just go on to the conference and division? Uh I figured let's just get done. It's, All right. Uh, I think All uh, right. we got All food right. ready. All right. Grind it through. We're going to move from the awards to the divisions. Are you ready to do some divisions? We'll start out in the NBA, the Atlet division. This is easily probably the deepest division in basketball. The Nets, a surprising plus 150 favorite. Celtics at plus 260. Sixers at plus 350. Raptors at plus 400. Uh, the Knicks are also in that division. Uh, any chance you're taking the Knicks here? Uh, no. <laughs> All right. What do you like in this division here? I, I think that one of those teams has kind of improved, and I, I have uh, one of their players winning a few awards this season. Um, I think the 76ers are a sneaky one. I think they provide good enough value, uh, and they got a pretty solid team as long as they can stay healthy. I think that – you know, they have a good potential of uh, winning that uh, division. Yeah, I, I highlighted two teams, uh, Sixers at plus 350, Raptors at plus 400. Uh, the Raptors have literally won that division the last, like, three years, so um, I don't see why we would go against that. Um, and the Sixers probably have the best talent, I'd say, uh, even over the Nets. Uh, now they all might hate each other, and – the roster might not fit, but I think they've made the balance that roster out. Uh, Doc's in there. I think they'll get a little bit of a boost. So I, I like the value at plus 350. Okay. You ready for this one? The yes. Central Division. Uh, I don't know if we can actually have anyone. I randomly picked one on the lower end just for the hell of it. But uh, the Bucks are minus 2,500. Pacers are plus 1,100. Bulls, 6,600. Pistons, plus 100. And 15,000. Uh, <laughs> I can't even read this. Cavaliers are 25,000. All right. Uh, I'm going to try to... Make this a talking point. Where are you looking for value in the central division? Oh God! I mean, you know, we, it's pretty much it's pretty much a lock. You know who the top contenders for that division are going to be. Uh, I don't think you know we have to spend too much time on this, but I mean, as far as value is concerned, you want to take a flyer. You want to drop a dollar on one of these teams. Uh, you know who it's got to be. All right. Uh, well, I wrote down the Pistons. <laughs> <laughs> hear me out Let's Blake hear. Griffin has a resurgence we get Blake from 2010 Jaron Grant turns out to be like his uncle Horace I don't quite know how that works out with Blake Griffin considering they're both sort of power forwards but he turns out to be really good uh, Killian Hayes becomes the greatest rookie since Luka Doncic I still don't know if they could beat the Bucks with that, but uh, they might could come in second. So at 15,000, maybe the Pistons. 
I mean, it's pretty good value. And I, I, I mean, so many things have to go right though for that to happen that I don't know how safe it actually is. Uh, that's definitely more of a flyer for me. Yeah, that's a no flyer. Nobody bet on the Pistons to win the Central Division. The Bucks are going to win that division by 30 games. <laughs> it's pretty much a foregone conclusion already, isn't it? All right, we'll move out west to the Northwest Division, another deep and good division. Nuggets minus 125, Utah Jazz plus 225, Portland Trail Blazers plus 375, Timberwolves plus 5,000, Thunder plus 15,000. Uh, I didn't like the value in the Nuggets. I had two teams highlighted. Where were you with this one? I don't know. Uh, I, this is, to me, this was a little more confusing. It's not as uh, as obvious. Um, there's some potential for some guys to, to really turn, for some teams to really turn it around this season. But I, I kind of wanted to get a feel for where you were at before I uh, really feel confident about any of these. Yeah. Uh, well, I highlighted the Blazers and I highlighted the Jazz. I didn't love the Jazz value at plus 225. I thought that was a little low, especially when you made the Nuggets plus or minus 125 favorites. I do like the Jazz, though, uh, to win that division. But if you think the Jazz are going to win the division, you're probably better off betting the money line every game. So, yeah. I, I, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say the value in the Blazers at plus. 375 is uh, pretty nice. Uh, it will be hard for to convince me that they can hop both the Jazz and the Nuggets, but uh, I, I mean, I think they'll definitely be in the mix there. Yeah, I could see where you're coming from with that. I, like I said, I wasn't 100% sold, and you have a, a really uh, good way of kind of selling me on certain teams. You've done it in other sports and uh, with some teams that I wasn't too fond of, but yeah, I, I like hearing your input. I, I think that it, what you're saying makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, okay. We'll move on to the Pacific Division. Lakers minus 125, Clippers plus 120, Warriors plus 1,800, Suns plus 2,000, Kings plus 15,000. Where are you going with this? Uh, Lakers, Clippers, easily the two favorites. I didn't like the value on either of those, but uh, I don't really like any of the other three teams in that division too much. Well, I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I, obviously, I want the Lakers to win being an, a Laker fan, but if we're going off of uh, value and risk, I, I think that, you know, well, the Warriors are pretty sneaky. I think that they're, uh, they have the potential to, to play well enough this season to take it. A lot of it's going to depend, obviously, on how the uh, the top teams do there. But I, I kind of like the Warriors to be a sneaky one. Yeah. Uh, I wrote down the Suns at plus 2,000. I, I don't know if I could truly convince myself that that's good. But uh, they do have Aiton, Booker, Paul, uh, Sarich. You know, they have some players, uh, Bridges, that can all play. Uh uh, they aren't quite at the Lakers, Clippers, or even Warriors level, I think. But, uh, you know, LeBron turns old. Uh, the Lake Clippers hate each other. Uh, Steph Curry gets hurt. Uh, that would take a lot to <laughs> sort of sync up into one season. But I guess if all that happens, then the Suns might be uh, okay. I'm shaking my head because uh, so far, I've, I, I'm, as far as the West is concerned, I've picked a lot of uh, – the warrior players to kind of really make an impact this season. And that's what you come out with. Uh, LeBron gets old, the Clippers hate each other and Curry gets hurt. Really? Oh, come on, man. Uh, I think that they provide pretty good value. And I think that they have a, a decent enough shot to, to win the division. So I kind of like the Warriors. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like the Warriors too. I think that's pretty good. We'll move to the Southeast division. Heat minus 300 Hawks plus 500 wizards plus 900. Magic plus 1,600, Hornets plus 3,300. Uh, Heat are pretty heavily favorites in a pretty weak division. Uh, I, you probably can guess where I'm going with this since I've pretty much been on every player for the award segment. But uh, where are you sitting in the Southeast? I know that there's not a lot of value there. Um, I can see why everybody's jumping on the Heat bandwagon. I, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, how they put on a pretty good run last season and they've got a lot of the same players back and they've improved a little bit. But I kind of like the Wizards. I think that, you know, what's, what's it at now? 
It's at 900. And uh, yeah. that's where I went to. Yeah, with 900, I mean, I think it provides, you know, really good value for, you know, the potential of them actually winning that division. Like you said, they've had some really good additions and they have the potential to be a really solid team this season. So the Heat, you know, they, they had a really cohesive unit last season. And to me, a lot of that play seemed, uh, seemed to be based off the players really gelling together, the coaching staff really gelling together. And those things can change, you know, from season to season. Uh, especially with additions and subtractions. So could I see the Wizards possibly take this division? Yeah, I could see it. I mean, I don't think it's that you know far gone of a conclusion. That So I, I like it at, at what the value it has. I, I really like the Wizards. Yeah, uh, I was just going to say, uh, it shocked me to look at this. Hawks and are plus 500, Wizards are plus 900. Looking at those rosters, do you think the Hawks are better than the Wizards? I don't think see uh, I don't think they are, but this is just my opinion. Uh, obviously, there's people that do this full time and they're much better at it than I am. Uh, but just on paper, I don't see it. Um, obviously, the game is not played on paper, but I think that I think that the Wizards have a really good chance of being a sneaky, uh, you know, up and coming team. Uh, that, like I said, if things go right, they definitely have the potential to win the division. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I was thinking Hawks more around magic level as they're fighting to get into that eight spot. I I think the Wizards will be in there pretty easy around a six or five. Yeah, I, I definitely I could see that happening. And um, that's why, it, to me, I think they provide the best value with the most safety. Yeah, uh, we'll move on. Mavericks minus 185. Rockets plus 425, Pelicans plus 500, Grizzlies plus 1400, Spurs plus 2500. Uh, I highlighted the Spurs just because I needed somebody to highlight uh, because I think the Mavericks are running away with this puppy. Yeah, I mean, do you think that's the case even if Harden stays in Houston? Yeah, I think they're. I think the Mavericks are just better than Houston right now. I. I guess maybe if Wall's healthy, that might level things off, but I'm not 100% sold on that. And I don't even know where Harden's head at. I think the Mavericks roll. And actually, at minus 185, where you're looking at like the Heat at minus 300, uh, you know, the Bucks at minus 2,500, I think there's halfway decent value in the Mavericks uh, at minus 185. Uh, the only thing uh, I say about the Spurs is that plus twenty five hundred, you never know, and I certainly wouldn't ever make them last in division in a division that has the Pelicans and the Grizzlies. Yeah, I mean, when you put it like that, uh, you compare it to the Heat. I think the value is there if you wanted to, you know, kind of go on the safer side. Um, but I agree with you as far as Houston's concerned. I think that there's just too much conflict, regardless of who stays and who goes. I think that uh, because the the lines were drawn at the, on the sand, I think that there's the chemistry is just going to be off, uh, and I don't feel safe about them, even even at you know a little bit of value that they have. Um, if I had to pick one, I, I I don't like any of them, but if I had to pick one, I'd probably go with the uh, the the underdog of the Spurs because of. Popovich that's yeah. pretty much it that's pretty much where I was I was like I think they probably are better than two of these teams uh they aren't better than the Mavericks and who knows with the Rockets the Rockets could be the worst team in the division by freaking March so no telling uh we'll move on to our conference champions uh I'll just read off the ones who are contenders I, I won't drop down into the bottom tier granted the west that's pretty much every team but uh lakers at plus 130 clippers at plus 360 nuggets at plus a thousand mavericks at plus 1400 warriors at 1400 suns at 2200 blazers at 2200 jazz at 2200 i don't put the rockets or pelicans in there i'm cutting it off at the jazz where are you going conference wise uh why don't you give me your overall pick and then uh what you think is good value uh i mean for overall, obviously, I, mean, I, I have to go with my team and the favorite to pretty much win. It's the Lakers. Um, do I think they provide value? I think for being the consensus favorite, they provide decent value. Uh, but if I had to go, again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on a little you know bandwagon thing here. 
Uh, the Golden State, I think, provides really good value at uh, – what's sitting at right now? I think it was uh, – Golden State is 1,400. Yeah, so, I mean, it's gotten even better from since the last time I looked at it. Uh, like I said, I think this team's going to be much improved. Um, maybe, you know, not as good as I thought they would have been if they would have been completely 100% healthy. But I still think that the the additions that they made uh, were enough to get them, a, get, get them high enough to make an impact. And I think that they have a shot, maybe not a, a really good shot, but I think they have a pretty good shot at, uh, you know, winning the conference uh, and – at that type of value, I think that it's definitely one of those safe, safe enough to take, but you know, there's enough uh, skin in the game there to make an impact. Yeah. Uh, overall, uh, I want to see how LeBron looks first before I, I say Lakers, if LeBron looks uh, good to go, I think it will definitely be the Lakers. Uh, the Nuggets, I think are the, probably the second favorite, uh, but I didn't love their value at 10 to one there. Just, uh, it's too much of a gamble on whether Michael Porter Jr. becomes an impact player or not. If he's an impact player, uh, I move him, you know, right on that Lakers line. But, you know, asking a third year, really a second year guy to make that jump, uh, really uh, a gamble. I bumped down the Mavericks. I don't think they're quite ready to make that run uh, to the finals yet. The two I highlighted, who I've been talking about most of this day, Trailblazers at uh, 2,200, Jazz at 2,200. A lot of veterans. Uh, a lot of good players. Um, I, I, the Trailblazers were in the conference finals uh, two years ago, so I think they're right there. They built this team, and uh, it might be one of those things where, uh, like the Mavs, uh, circa I believe it was 2010, where they chop that wood, and uh, it finally that tree comes down, and they, they make their run in, into the finals there. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. That makes a lot of sense. All right, we'll move on to the Eastern Conference. Uh, Bucks plus 220, Nets plus 250, Celtics plus 650, Heat plus 800, 76ers plus 900. I'll say the Raptors, but I definitely cut it off there at plus 1400. Where are you going, Eastern Conference? To me, the Eastern Conference is a little bit more of a, um, it, you know, it's not as good as the West, obviously, and uh, the, the talent is is pretty sparingly you know it's it's mostly on the west so the east is a little easier to predict i think um now i'm not saying it's easy to predict who the winner is going to be i just think that it's easier to predict who the top five teams are going to be in the east um but for me value wise i i didn't really feel good about a lot of these odds uh, i think that if i had to do anything i would probably just uh, go ahead and roll with the either the 76ers at was it uh 800 yes uh, so I think the 76ers at 800 900. provide 900. Okay. I think at, at 900, they provide, you know, a good enough value to where I feel confident about it. I think they've had enough tools to possibly make a run. A lot of it's going to have to do with health though. Uh, can they all stay healthy? Uh, but I think they've got, they've got the pieces in place to possibly, you know, get a good enough record to, to make a run. Now I think that they're probably a better uh, regular season team than they are postseason team. Um, and I think that plays a lot into it. But if I really had to take a flyer on it, I kind of the Wizards are a huge underdog, and, and I think that they've improved themselves enough to where they could be sneakily good. Yeah, 41 is uh, a real uh, nice value. I highlighted, too, uh, my overall pick. I, I think this is the Bucks year. I, I think they'll make it to the finals. I don't know if they'll win it, but I think they'll make it to the finals. Uh, but the Heat at plus 800, they did it last year. Uh, uh, some of their young guys might be even better this year. I, I like uh, their draft pick and uh, Precious Achunwa. So, you know, I think they'll be improved. And plus 800 for the team that made it last year seems like pretty good value. And the other one I highlighted was the Sixers. A uh, lot of talent on that team. Plus 900, decent value. I don't know if they can put it together. All right. So we've made our way through the conference. Now we're to the championship. Why don't you give me your winner and then give me what you think the best value is. Okay. For uh, NBA champs, uh, my winner this season is the Lakers. I, I still think that they, I think they actually got better than they were last season. Now, granted last season was a little weird because of the bubble, but I, I think that 
it was still a struggle in itself. You know, all the uh, struggles they have to go through as far as isolating themselves, being away from family members uh, and being locked in into one particular uh, location. I'm sure it played into the mentality of uh, each player in their own way. But I, I think that mentally they're probably a little bit stronger this season. They have brought in uh, some key role players, uh, you know, so they're still my favorites to win the game. Uh, value wise, I really like the Warriors. Uh, it, I think it's 25. at 2,500. Yeah. I think at 2,500, I think, like I've said, I've been saying it pretty much all day long. Uh, they're, they're improved enough to where they could get back into contention. You know, it wasn't really too long ago when everybody expected them to be the consensus number favorite, number one favorite in the West. Um, not a lot has changed. Yes. They've lost, you know, a big marquee player in, in, uh, in Durant, but they were still a solid team in before Durant got there and they were still a favorite before Durant got there. So yes, the loss does hurt them. Yes. The Clay Thompson injury is, is huge, but I think that they have enough depth on, the, on that team to, to make a run. I don't think they're probably going to have the best record in the, the conference by any means, but I could definitely see them possibly get into the final dance. Um, so those are my favorites to win it. Um, I don't know if you want me to tell you who I think is going to be in it. Go for it. To me, uh, as far as odds are concerned, I think that the Bucks Warriors probably has the best payout. Uh, oh, that's and, nice. And it has a really good, I think, safety-wise, it, it's safe enough for me to feel confident about it. I feel confident that the Bucks that this is their season, like you said a little while ago. I also think that they're going, you know, all the way to the finals this uh, this year. Do I think they'll win? Uh, I'm not sure. I think that they are still missing a few key components. Um, but they've got, you know, one of the best players in the league, and that's enough to get you to that spot. Uh, but I really like the Bucks warriors at plus 5,000. I think that that's my pick for NBA Finals. That's nice. All right. My favorite I'm going to lean towards the Bucks. I think the karma is good this year. Giannis signed his big Supermax. He's going to be a buck for at least five more years. Uh, so I, I like the Bucks. Um, I also like the value in the Bucks at plus 50, 550. So I don't think that's too bad. Uh, the Mavericks at plus 2,500. Uh, if a lot of things break right, I think they could maybe finagle their way in there. They certainly have one of the best players in the league in Luka Doncic. Uh, Chris Tapp's Porzingis could be one of the best players in the league if he can stay healthy. So when you have two of the best players in the league, that puts you in the mix. And at 25 to one, you know, that's a flyer. You take it, maybe. And the other one I highlighted, uh, we've mentioned pretty much this whole time, the Blazers at 40 to one. You know, uh, I see a lot of resemblance to this, uh, that Mavs team that won it. Uh, they've stayed together. They fought. And uh, maybe everything sort of breaks right for them this year. And they make their way in there. And at 40-1, to 1, that seemed like pretty good value, too. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I've really just kind of been on, you know. Do you want me to give you my Pistons thoughts at plus uh, 50,000? And how <laughs> I don't think that's necessary. Uh, if you want to talk about a long shot, I mean, uh, I was going to break down what has to happen to every team in front of them to for them to get their way to the finals. So we, I think we've got about you know what five hours before we uh, we have to clock in to the uh, nine to five, as they call it. Yeah, uh, it, it might take that long for me to break down yeah. everything that breaks right. Or, you know, we could always split it up into two different shows. Uh, we'll just continue with the rest tomorrow because that's going to take some time. Yeah. All right. That's our NBA season awards preview and conference division and championship. Be sure to be ready for the NBA season. We'll definitely have our picks coming up on the Drive and Dish podcast, especially with some daily fantasy plays as well. I might even be able to talk the Achilles reign into giving me some NBA picks throughout the year. I don't know, but uh, he, I'll certainly make sure he looks at the line so he learns NBA betting and how actually terrible it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how confident I feel about betting on basketball. Uh, I've been obviously uh, more of a football guy, but you know, this season has been really weird, especially with the whole COVID thing. So I definitely feel my betting hand uh, a little itchy here. So we <laughs> might have to jump on some of that action. 
All right. Be sure to follow us on greenlightnetwork.org for all our podcasts. Achilles Rain will be joining us for the NFL Football Time Podcast Review Show. I'm not sure he's going to be in a great mood, uh, but I think he's going to show up nonetheless. Uh, it might be a bitter Achilles Rain, though. Much more bitter than he was on the NBA show. You know, if you would have talked to me yesterday, you definitely would have gotten the better one, but I'm, I'm kind of getting over it. Although that's not to say that after I see you at work and you let me have it, uh, I will get bitter again. I don't again, think so. you have to worry about me. I think you have to worry about our other colleague, the Dynamite. Oh, I, I heard a little bit about it and not just him, uh, also uh, Mark. Yeah, he thought he was uh, very clever when he came in here and started asking me about scores of certain games. I knew the Rams <laughs> score was coming up. So, yeah, but uh, I'll, I'll be in a better mood by the time we record. All right, that's our show. Where can we find you, Achilles? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at TD Achilles. You can find me on Instagram at also TD Achilles. All right. Thanks for Achilles Rayford. Join us, and we're out. Uh, 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 uh,